From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting. Iran has told the International Atomic Energy Agency it will resume testing of a new generation of nuclear centrifuges. The head of its nuclear energy agency said equipment testing will resume. Correspondent Edward Uranian reports for VOA from Cairo. Ali Akbar Salahi said Tehran would remain within the framework of the nuclear deal reached with the five permanent members of the United Nations plus Germany. Salahi added that the accord allowed Iran to test the new generation of nuclear centrifuges and that his country's nuclear program is intended for peaceful civilian purposes. President Trump withdrew the United States from the 2015 nuclear accord last month. Britain, France and Germany have been attempting to salvage the deal that Trump has described as horrible and one-sided. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. Iran's representative to the United Nations nuclear organization says his country will not agree to cooperate more fully with UN nuclear inspectors until a standoff over the future of the 2015 agreement with major powers is resolved. The IAEA is policing the restrictions placed on Iran under the deal. It has said Iran is keeping its promises but also called for timely and proactive cooperation on providing access for unannounced inspections. The U.S. Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction says anti-corruption efforts in Afghanistan continue to face challenges of capacity, resources, and lack of action against powerful individuals. This is VOA News. The European Union says it will begin imposing a new set of tariffs on U.S. imports beginning in July in response to new U.S. import duties of 25 percent on EU steel and 10 percent on aluminum. Tentative plans to reduce the number of American special operations commandos deployed in Africa are drawing mixed reactions from American military experts. The New York Times first reported the plan this week. The Times reported the number of commandos on the continent could be reduced from about 1,200 to 700 over the next three years. Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea have reopened their border six months after it was sealed to stop the movement of armed groups that fought uh, fought to overthrow the president who has led Equatorial Guinea since 1979. Correspondent Moki Edwin Kinsica reports from the Equatorial Guinea Guinea border town of Ebebian, that strict controls remain on movement across the border. Two months ago, the border was opened only two days every week, and movement was under strict control of the Equatorial Guinea military. But today, movement is allowed daily, with impromptu and spontaneous checks by the country's police force. Obiang, who celebrated his 76th birthday on Tuesday, was elected to a fifth seven-year term in 2016, In polls, the opposition said were rigged to his favor. Moki Edwin Kinzaka for VOA News, Ibebiin, Equatorial Guinea. A federal judge is siding with the city of Philadelphia in the fight with the Trump administration over so-called sanctuary cities. Associated Press correspondent Ed Donahue reports. President Trump wants to cut off grant money to cities over the handling of immigrants in the country illegally. Sanctuary cities are the best friend of gangs and cartels like MS-13. You know that. The judge ruled the conditions placed on Philadelphia to receive funding are unconstitutional, arbitrary, and capricious. It is a ruling that prevents a White House run by a bully from bullying Philadelphia into changing its policies. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney called it the equivalent of a political shakedown. And I'm proud to stand here today and remind the world that Philadelphia has always been and will remain a welcoming city. In April, a federal appeals court sided with Chicago in a similar dispute. I'm Ed Donahue. President Trump will host his first iftar dinner Wednesday in observance of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. He didn't host an iftar dinner last year, breaking a tradition started by President Clinton. You can find more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world around the clock at voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA News.